Hi there, welcome to this podcast. This is a portion of enjoyment from the Holy Word for Morning Revival for today on the general topic of Experiencing, Enjoying, and Expressing Christ, Part 1, 2024 Summer Training, 2024 July Semiannual Training, Week 6, Day 1. The title of this portion of enjoyment is Christ is the Word of God, the Journeying Triumph God on the Bridge of Time, John 1. We hope you enjoy the Lord while listening to this portion and we welcome your comments with what you have enjoyed. As the introduction to the whole Gospel of John, John 1 stresses that Christ is the Word of God as the definition, explanation, and expression of the mysterious and invisible God, especially in the five greatest events in the history of the universe. Hallelujah for our Christ! This week in our morning revival we come to the first amazing nugget from the Gospel of John, Christ is the Word of God. The first verse of John says, In the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Christ is the Word of God, this is very meaningful. A definition of the Bible is that the Bible is the autobiography and history of the journeying trying God as the Word of God. Wow! The Bible shows us not just events, history, poetry, doctrines, prophecies, and many other things, the Bible shows us the autobiography and history of the journeying trying God as the Word of God. In PSA 92 we are told that God is God from eternity to eternity. He is God from eternity past, on the bridge of time, and into eternity future. Our God is triune, and He simply is. In eternity past, God was a bachelor, we could call Him the bachelor God. He did not have a counterpart. He was and still is perfect, but He was not complete. But praise the Lord, our God wants to get married, He wants to become the married God. For this, He created all things, He created the universe with all things in it, and He created man. This began the bridge of time, and the bachelor God became the creating God. Then, He Himself had to come onto the bridge of time to become the incarnated God. The eternal God who is without beginning and ending became a man and was incarnated to be a human being on the bridge of time. It is amazing to know that God became a man, He was incarnated to be a man. Then, this incarnated God went a step further to become the redeeming God. He went through death to redeem us so that we can be His bride, and He was the redeeming God. Then, through death and resurrection, He became the life-giving Spirit, now He is the compounded God. All that He is and He has, all He has achieved and accomplished, has been compounded into the compounded God. Then this compounded God has come into us, the believers in Christ, to be one with us, He is now the indwelling God. The eternal God went through a process to become the indwelling God. As He indwells us, He is incorporated with us, and He is now the incorporated God. Hallelujah, our God today is the incorporated God, for God dwells in man and man dwells in God. The consummation of all He does is Him becoming the married God, the consummated triumph God married with the processed and consummated man to be a universal couple, the Spirit and the Bride, in the New Jerusalem for eternity. Hallelujah! This week we want to see the steps that God took in His journeying to accomplish His eternal economy and how Christ as the Word of God expresses, defines, and explains the mysterious and invisible God. Christ is the Word of God, the definition, explanation, and expression of the invisible God. John 1 is the introduction to the whole Gospel of John. The main stress of this introduction is that Christ is the Word of God, the definition, explanation, and expression of the mysterious and invisible God. John 1 1. God is invisible and mysterious, but He is embodied in Christ, who is the Word of God. Christ is the Word of God, therefore, He is the definition of the mysterious and invisible God. He is the explanation and expression of the invisible God. If we want to know God, we need to come to Christ as the Word of God, we need to read Christ in order to know God. If we want to know God, we need to study Christ prayerfully, and we need to behold Christ, contemplate Him, and gaze on Him as the Word of God. Christ as the Word of God is the great I Am, He is self-existing and ever-existing, Exo. 3:14 3:14-15, John 8:24, 28, 58, Hebrews 7:3. Christ is the Word of God, the very I Am, and He is the One who is eternal, without beginning or ending. God revealed Himself as being the Great I Am in Exo. 3, where He told Moses to say to the children of Israel, I Am has sent me to you. God is the eternal present tense. When we come to John 8, this term I Am is used three times, the Lord said, Unless we believe that I Am, you will die in your sins. Then He said, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I Am. Finally, in V. 58. The Lord said, Before Abraham came into being, I am. His opposers were trying to tell him that he is not even fifty years old, and he already saw Abraham, but the Lord said that, Before Abraham was, Christ is the I am. 
Christ is the Word of God, the only begotten Son, John 1 18, and He is the definition, explanation, and expression of God. He is the great I Am, self-existing and ever-existing, everything other than Christ is vanity of vanities. People may do something great today and then they go away, and no one holds their memory, only Christ is, and He is the one eternal, without beginning or ending, Hebrews 7 3. In eternity past, Christ was the Word of God to express, explain, and define and manifest God, and today He does the same thing. In the beginning, this refers to the eternity past. Then, at the end of chapter 1, when the Lord said to Nathanael that he will see the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man, v. 51, the Lord was speaking about eternity future. In eternity past and for eternity future, Christ is the Word of God to express, define, explain, and manifest God. Even more, on the bridge of time, Christ is the Word of God. In eternity past Christ was the Word of God, and He was with God and was God. He only had divinity in eternity past. But in eternity future he will have not only divinity but also humanity, for he came on the bridge of time and was incarnated to be a man. In eternity future Christ will be not just God but also man, he will be not just the Son of God but also the Son of Man, having both divinity and humanity. Between eternity past and eternity future God stretched forth a bridge, the bridge of time, and on this bridge of time, he is working in many ways to obtain what he is after and carry out his eternal economy. He created all things, He did many things to be with man and help man, and He eventually stepped on the bridge of time to become a man. He became a man as the Word of God to explain, define, and express the mysterious and invisible God. Praise the Lord! The triune God became a man to accomplish His eternal economy, to drive the car of His economy on the bridge of time. Now He is driving His car across the bridge of time to accomplish all that He needs to accomplish, and once He fulfills what He desires, He will wrap up the bridge of time and eternity future will come in. Hallelujah! All the necessary work of God will be carried out on the bridge of time, and for eternity future God will rest and enjoy together with His wife, the composition of all His redeemed, regenerated, transformed, and glorified ones. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, Christ is the Word of God to be the definition, explanation, and expression of the mysterious and invisible God. Amen, Lord Jesus, grant us to see you as the Word of God. We want to behold Christ as the Word of God to know God. Shine on us through your Word and infuse God into our being. O Lord, you are the I Am. You are self-existing and ever-existing. We believe that Jesus Christ is the great I Am, self-existing and ever-existing. Amen, Lord, you are the one who is eternal, without beginning or ending. Praise you for creating all things according to the purpose of your will. Thank you for coming as the Word of God to be incarnated to be a man, accomplish a wonderful redemption, and become the life-giving Spirit to come into us and regenerate us for your body, your corporate expression. Amen, Lord Jesus, thank you for including us in God's eternal economy so that we may be one with Christ as the incarnated Word of God to express God, define God, and explain God to those around us. Christ is the Word of God, the journeying triune God on the bridge of time, John 1. John chapter 1 refers to Christ, with the two sections of eternity and the bridge of time, in the five greatest events in the history of the universe, creation, incarnation, redemption, anointing, and building, PSA. 90-1-2, Micah 5-2. In Matt. 2 we see a quote from Micah 5-2, which refers to God's goings forth. It is easy to know that Christ is the Word of God and that He is the journeying triune God on the bridge of time, but it is not so easy to experientially know Him and enjoy Him as such a one. Just as the priests and scribes knew that Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem but never went to worship Him, even though they had the knowledge, so we today may miss Christ if we only have the knowledge but do not enjoy Him in a personal way. God's goings forth are from eternity. Although Christ was born in Bethlehem, His goings forth were from ancient times, from the days of eternity. Christ's appearing, His manifestation, began in eternity, from ancient times. The triune God was preparing to come forth out of eternity into time with His divinity into humanity to be born in Bethlehem as a man. He created all things as a preparation for Him to come forth out of eternity into time. He is many goings forth, He was going forth in His incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. Even more, His goings forth today are in us, the believers in Christ, who are His continuation and part of the journeying triune God on the bridge of time. Hallelujah! He came into our being to regenerate us in our spirit, and He continues His goings forth from our spirit into every part of our soul to fully transform our soul, and He will even go forth in our body to transfigure our mortal body. Hallelujah! 
John 1, as a prologue to the entire book of John, is an abstract of the history of the journeying triune God as the Word in eternity past, ultimately becoming the new Jerusalem in eternity future, John 1 1, 4-5, 51. The triune God began His journey on the bridge of time when the Word of God was incarnated, Christ is the Word of God, and the Word became flesh to step on the bridge of time, v. 14. Then, he went through many processes in order to carry out his economy, and he consummates in the New Jerusalem as the married God. John 1 shows us in a crystallized way the eternal word in his creating work and also in his journeying across the bridge of time. In this chapter we see that God became man, the word became flesh, for the accomplishing of his judicial redemption. Then, he became the anointing, life-giving, and transforming spirit for the carrying out of his organic salvation. Ultimately, he became fully united, mingled, and incorporated with his regenerated, transformed, and glorified bride to be the New Jerusalem, the ultimate Bethel, the mutual abode of God and man, as seen in v. 51, the house of God. John 1 reveals five universal, historical events, and how Christ is the Word of God in each one of them as the journeying triumph God. Christ is the Creator in creation, v. v. 1-6, the man who tabernacled among us in incarnation, v. 14, the lamb in redemption, v. 29, the anointing spirit in transformation, and the latter in joining earth to heaven for God's building. Hallelujah, Christ is the Word of God as the journeying triune God in these five universal, historical events. As the Word of God, Christ defines, explains, and expresses the invisible God. This chapter is quite mysterious and wonderful, for it starts from eternity past, v. 1, and ends with eternity future, v. 51, and in between we see the bridge of time and what Christ as the Word of God accomplished on the bridge of time. We need to not only see that Christ is the Word of God but even more, enjoy Him, partake of Him, and behold Him in our spirit. We need to have not just the written Word of God but even more, the living Word of God of God and the applied Word of the Spirit. When we read and pray over John 1 we receive not only knowledge concerning Christ being the Word of God but even more, we are ushered into the enjoyment and experience of this one. Every time we come to Christ as the Word of God we need to tell Him, Lord, I come to You in Your Holy Word, dispense Yourself into me. May we practice this and may we really enjoy and experience Christ as the Word of God. Lord Jesus, we come to You as the Word of God to enjoy You and behold You. We open to You. Speak to us in Your Word. Infuse us with yourself. O Lord, thank you for being the Word of God to express God, explain God, and define God. Thank you for being the one who created all things and who sustains all things by the Word of your power. Thank you for stepping onto the bridge of time to become a man. Hallelujah, the infinite God became a man for us to know God, enjoy God, and see God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for accomplishing your wonderful redemption. Thank you for becoming the anointing, regenerating, life-giving spirit coming into our spirit to impart God's life into us and make us members of Christ. Hallelujah, Christ as the Word of God will soon return, and the angels will descend and ascend on Him as the Son of Man. Lord, we come to You in Your Word. Speak to us. Dispense Yourself into us. Infuse us with all that You are so that we may eat You and live because of You today.